This is March Madness. This is the March Madness podcast. Um, dude, we're going to get into it. <laughs> People are going crazy about March Madness. I never, like, we're just asking about it. I'll, like, watch the games when it gets a little closer, like the, what, Sweet 16, stuff like that. But uh, people they really should, it. honestly, they should turn NCRHA Nationals into the March Madness Tournament. Why not? That would be sick. That yeah. would be sick. So, anyways, welcome to the RD and Roller Show. <laughs> Obviously, you heard the co-host over there, Ant Merrigan. I don't think I've ever introduced you as the co-host because we're both like the hosts of it. That's uh, what the AI told you to do. Yeah, the AI <laughs> was in my mind telling me to call you the co-host. Um, but anyways, let's get into it. The RD and Roller Show is back. Got a pretty cool episode going on. Going to have uh, got the Wish Cup. Got Colby Kohler coming on onto the, onto the pod. Um, but first, let's, uh, let's head over east. Let's talk to Ant. I know we were just talking some March Madness here, so... Uh, what do you yeah. got going in your neck of the woods? I'm I'm one finger loose now, so okay. that's a good start. So it's recovering pretty good. We have uh this guy at the rink. His name's uh, Tom Gagliano. We call him Gags, but he's like the rink nurse. Anytime someone gets hurt, they're like, "Yo, can you text Gags for me?" And like this poor guy just get like all these men's league. Like, yo, I pulled my groin. What do I do? He's like, rest. Like he just gives you like <laughs> rest, you dog. You idiot. <laughs> like just rest. So I asked him last night. I was like, "What's up with my finger?" So I took off my little uh splint the show him and he said it actually looks pretty good so i'm pretty happy about that so winter wars in sight that's that's what i'm hoping for there you go when's so, winter war when when a uh, winter wars adult is in april yeah. right yeah april 12th to the 14th at marple okay. so i have what three weeks about to to get there so i should be good i've been like skating around uh just like no stick but it feels so weird to skate without a stick like it's so bizarre to me like weird yeah, balance I mean, and stuff. You're yeah, like, just like, like I, yeah, yeah. It just feels weird. Like I don't know. So like I just, people like, actually do this. They go to the skating center yeah. and actually skate like with boring. nothing. Like yeah, like boring. What are but you doing? I like grab the lefty from the one of the guys so I can hold it with my opposite hand, like my as a top hand, and just like kicking the. You know how you do with the goal? You kind of put the yeah. stick against your knee and fling it. So I was just doing that for a little bit just to get me to do something. I'm you can rest, like, dude. You know, it's not like you I was thinking rest. about it, but like the guys are maniacs. You know what I mean? Immense league. Like I don't need some dude missing a face off and smacking my finger or something. So I'm just gonna just do what I got to do, run the league instead. So what about you? What's, what's going on in your neck of the woods? Is it March madness, itself? dude. This is the yeah. year of, uh, this is the year of sadness as being a Duke fan. So I'm probably going to get a lot of haters because I know a lot of people don't like Duke, but I'm a Duke. You're fan. a huge Duke guy, right? Big Duke guy. I lived in North Carolina. So I, uh, big Duke guy over here, but they usually just let me down. Now I, it's never like really, you know, they've, they have a couple of national championships. We have five now, but it's just year after year. You just have too many high hopes. You know, my bracket is already filled out Duke to the top without even like pretty much filling in the rest of it out. So, but watching some uh, Duke versus Vermont here first round. Uh, and then All right. that's pretty much it. Bye. That ended. should be a win, right? That should be a win, right? Duke versus Vermont. That you never know, win. dude. You never, you never know. Uh, you just, right. you, you really, you, you never know. Um, but yeah, so since Paiha ended, not a lot of hockey. I know we got a couple of roller tournaments coming up. One tournament I kind of do want to shout out first is the Colorado Cup. Uh, we're going to be kind of involved with that, too. I know the Demon Dogs are going to be playing. Uh, but just it's a local tournament here starting up. Um, had one last year as well, too. I believe it was two weeks after our Mile High Showdown. But that was kind of the point of the Mile High Showdown, to get hockey going back here in Colorado. And now we got a tournament series here called the Colorado Cup, which is huge. Perfect. It's by one of my buddies, Connor Parker, played longtime Colorado Kodiaks. Uh, he even played over in France for Rizone, actually, because we're about to talk about uh, Copa de France. Played over in France for two teams. Lived in California, played with Saddleback. But, uh, yeah, so he has a Colorado Cup, Colorado Cup going on here. So we're going to be involved with that as well, too, which is huge. Uh, but other than that, you know, just uh, it's coasting by. It's getting through the summer, you know. Yeah, off season, baby. Recover off season. The body. Um, but let's talk about Copa de France. I think uh, the France Federation, uh, every content creator in France, Lionel, my God, my FMT, yeah. they just totally killed it at the Copa de France. That was such yeah. a sick event to be in America and feel like you were there by how much content they put out and the way the live streams were I incredible. Yeah, they they always do a good job at presenting their product, and I I thought it was really cool. I forget, I think it was um, I know we posted it was posted on our page too, but the back the far away picture 
with dude. like the stands and the so you know, nasty dude it looked way and then they did the overview of like the drone footage of the overview of the arena way bigger than i imagined because usually when you watch these french games they're in like gyms you know like traditional gyms that we would have in like a middle school or something and they're just plopping a rink in there but that picture was nasty it was pack too which is awesome to see um usually at international events like he gets that pack like you know at the world skate games and things like that you'll get all the so, to come and watch but that was sick um what i heard and i i, I know a couple people posted it different places but league U elite posted it um as well too that they had um over two thousand spectators there live which awesome. no doubt you know and i'm sure and then online Four thousand over four thousand, you know, people streaming. I know at one point I was looking online, it was like two point six, you know, going up to three thousand, and yeah, like <clears throat> roller is huge over there. I know a lot of people over here in America is watching it, but that's a like every stream they have on Saturdays for their league, they have you know hundreds of people watching. So, oh yeah, um, yeah, the, the way they that event they put on is so sick, especially the. Have it just having that final four, you know, having the four teams play, and then you get to play that championship game Sunday. So, you know, I know a lot of the guys go in and kind of go in for that weekend, just kind of see the other, you know, the other friends and stuff that are over there. So that's what's sick. There's, um, do you think because like a lot of these French towns are smaller, right? So I feel like they get a natural built in following because it's something to do in these smaller cities. Yeah. And, that's what, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's I think why that's... a lot of eyes are on it. You're hundred percent right. I think that's what like, you know, Joey, Joey D and Teed were saying when we were talking to them about Trace Contos and uh, every European player that we talk to, um, there's not a lot of like, you know, they have soccer in a lot of these European countries, which is pretty big, but the next biggest sport sometimes is inline hockey or they're actually getting money put into it. So people are actually going to watch, you know, it's something to do in yep. the town because there's not a lot of, you know, maybe things to do in the town. So I just think it's the way like, you know, it's, it's structured and set up. It's, you know, it's perfect here in America. It's hard just because dude, you're competing with like so many other sports that are just, you know, it, yeah. it's a little different, but yeah, I think and they know their bread and about, butter and they have it. And just think about ice hockey, how popular ice hockey, especially in like your area, my area, like ice dominates, you know, I was talking to someone the other day and they're like roller hockey season for us is March to August. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's a short window. But there's so many other things going on. But they did such a – I mean, they did a great job. I mean, I loved uh, – one thing I did like about the picture, because I didn't want to not say this, is the, the Crips jersey that that you spotted out. When that was hilarious. That yeah. was sick. Like, a little – like, because he played a Rattel. And then, uh, and then obviously, Berger with the with the sick picture. So, that's awesome that he was able to sauce that over our way. So, shout out to him. But I thought that was hilarious that there was a Crips jersey in the crowd and, and you spotted it because it's kind of hard to see. Yeah. Like, in the bottom left corner. It's like, yeah, it's right. Well, and yeah, it's right there in front of you. And you, and there's a couple other jerseys too people are wearing. And I was trying to like zoom in to see if, you know, there was a, uh, you know, like a, a main bar, uh, Taylor Kane or something. Uh, I know TK yeah. played there. So, but no, just overall, the one thing that I really love and I think would be really cool to play on, obviously that small rink, but just the way the boards are set up, like you have no glass around the edges. So it's a little yeah. different. I think yeah. that's just interesting. You know, a lot of, a lot of players and people I talk to here, you know, think like, oh dude, we would just dominate those teams. We would, you know, shit kick them. You, I don't know. Like on that rink, it's a, it's a different game. Different. Yeah. It's a way different game. And you can see that. You know, that championship game for Zone versus Rattel, I, I, for Zone, after Joey D scored that goal, I think that was three to one, or they yeah. went up, I, I believe I so. Right. Yeah, yeah. But dude, that, that, you know, Rattel has that top checked, um, uh, Rattel. Why do I keep calling them Rattel? That's not. I think it's called Rattel. I think that's how it's actually pronounced. All right. Well, one of those. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But they're just that team. They're, they're so dominant and they're experienced. I think that's like, the biggest like the biggest difference like you know that you saw is the experience coming to play yeah. in those big time games you know peter skoland merrick Lascott, these players play in world championship games they play at pama pro these players play in the yeah. biggest of the biggest events so they do know how to shine yeah and you saw like once once verzone went up retell pushed back right away and even verzone had a couple power plays i think in the second half 
and they were able to kill them off, which is huge, right? Because you know, in roller hockey, you get a power play sometimes, and so much auto, you know, yeah, like yeah. it can be, it can be, but with the smaller rank, it's a little different because the you know your box is a little tighter and things like that. But um, but it was it was an awesome game to watch, honestly. Like, so we sick to watch. I had I had like four or five people texting me during the game, just like, yo, are you watching this game? Like, this is a safe game, blah blah blah. So um, yeah, it wound up being a uh, a good final game. Probably the best the best the best two teams played in that final game, in my opinion. Yeah. So with Villanova, one thing that I noticed, Corey Hodge was over there playing with them. Uh, so Hodge was over there, but no Robbie Valjean. So he maybe was yeah. probably had ice or something like that. But you know, Hodge is a big pickup too for that team. Um, it it, it does suck. You only get to see him play one. You know, obviously only one game because you just never know once you know once they get going, but. Would be sick if Hodges is staying over there, you know, and playing the yeah, rest of the season. Be. That's a huge help. That's on that D end. No one eats more pucks. No, so. guy eats pucks for a living. So yeah, so that would be huge. And and you and you said that in the last pod with like the Robbie Ballinger and like being there, like that could be one of those things that pushes them over the edge and maybe gets them that extra goal. And obviously with him not being there, it was still that was another really good game. The other, you know, the other semifinal against the Spiders, like with Tell versus Spiders, like we kind of knew that one was coming. You know, a team that kind of jumped up and outplayed, you know, outplayed what they sh- where they should have been. Um, and they did get a couple goals I saw here and there, but you know, they're kind of just like those goals you're like, yeah, we're up seven nothing. <laughs> you know, we're yeah, we it's gave a little, up. It is what it is. Yeah, it's a little but, harder. But yeah, uh, good event overall. Good, good showcasing of of the sport. I think, in my opinion, like just even the broadcast being per- like obviously not everyone speaks french but you know being able to watch it and how they did it with highlights and stuff like that it was all really good yeah loved it loved it, it was sick and just another huge shout out to the france league league elite federation of france um you know everyone involved lionel with my fmt so many people that we you know we kind of had this plan worked with to work with them in this um you know just be collaborator on posts and do different things so i think just like the promotion of it overall was just huge so yeah. huge shout out to the you elite on that that was awesome um one thing i just <clears throat> i want to say we're watching march madness i am right now what if ncrha what do you th- what do you think would happen if ncrha did that so you just take all the divisions okay you take the d1 d2 d3 and then i think it's the double a division now and you did do like a i mean it'd almost probably be like 30 or 40 teams you know national yeah. nationals what if you did a big bracket like that? And like, maybe like you win, you move on, you lose, you go down a loser's bracket and you play for like tier two championship. I mean, that would be sweet if it was like a relegation process like that. Like if you were, let's just say you lost in your D2, right? Yeah. You play this. You have to play to stay in D2 or the D3 th- teams could jump you and you get switched down. Like that would be a sick idea. Um, I think the pride, the, their biggest challenge is just logistics, you know, maybe a yeah. finding a rank B getting. Well, I mean, I'm just there, saying so. you could all do it at the national tournament. Oh yeah. It, it you know would know what have I mean? to be at nationals. Yeah. yeah it would be, be your, so your nationals would be one big bracket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I think it'd be down. That would be sick. I, I, yeah. can you imagine that bracket. Be like, because think about it. Lindenwood, for example, let's take Lindenwood, for example, you know, they uh, they pretty much play the same D1 teams all the time. So now, like, yeah. maybe they're playing, like, a Boston College or they're playing, like, a Florida University, like, a different type of team that they normally wouldn't, which would be cool on both sides because you're not playing. But, obviously, competition's probably not there. But, hey, yeah. I think it'd be sick March Madness style uh, in CRHA Jamboree. Yeah, that, that would be sick. <laughs> I mean, especially because it goes along with the college team, right? So, you know, kind of comparing apples to apples. But, yeah, that would be a pretty sweet idea. And, um, yeah, I think hit the nail on the head. Not much more to say about that. All right. Well, let's move on to the next one. Uh, Women's draft tourney. Let's – if you want to get into this one. Yeah, so this is going to be um, a fundraiser for the National Development Program on the women's side of things. Um, So it's a 16-plus tournament. So it's basically women's and junior women. Um, so and it's, there's two divisions, right? Yeah, there's okay. two divisions exactly. So, um, it's going to be Saturday, May 18th, and May 19th in Irvine. Um, so women, and I know how they do like kind of the teams is they have a bunch of sponsors for each team. So you know you'll have you know Labade is a sponsor for one, and so and so is a sponsor for another. I know women's roller hockey, you know, does a team too. So, um, I know that it's it's going to be cool because the, I think last year was the first year they did it. So now. They did it a second year, so it's definitely grown. 
Um, I know there's only a few spots left from the post they put up a couple of weeks ago. So again, if you're, uh, if you're listening and you want to get involved, definitely get your uh, registration in or hit up the women's roller hockey account to, to get involved. Yeah. So right now they've released three captains for the, the tournament. First one is Vicky, uh, Vicky Hun um, of the LA Kings team captain. So LA Kings are going to be a team, which is going to be pretty sick. Yep. Um, you're also going to have for the second team, mid of uh, so is this year the mid mad mad Atlantic. hockey yeah so the mid-atlantic is just one of the districts within a- aau yeah okay so it's just their sponsor of it yep perfect um yeah so in miranda lemus she's going to be the captain i know she does a lot of stuff from the east coast to east the coast boston area yep. Yep. yep um third captain uh the goat herself laura behantra of ringster uh she's going to be the team captain of that too one thing that i think is pretty cool is you're going to probably have i'm sure they're going to release release more captains and these captains are probably going to be a lot more of the pros that you're going to see which is really cool because now these younger players and all different players get a chance to play on this team but even more so this is going to help you know these two you know ali era and laura they're part of team usa for the women's yeah. part so, so this is going to help players exactly find players scout players and just grow the game overall um yeah. so which is really cool um, but yeah, those are the three captains released so far. I'm sure they're going to release more um, as it as the time goes on. So yeah, I know. Obviously, Allie's probably going to be a captain for one of them uh, as well. And then what's cool? So just because you did mention it earlier, with it being that there is a junior women's division too, so it's already grown. Because last year, I believe it was just one. Yeah, so pretty cool to see it going. And that's kind of one of the one of the things we talked about with some of the ID skates before. They're trying to just do more events with team USA involved just to get people involved with uh, the program. And, you know, maybe it's now or five years down the road, it doesn't matter, but they just want to get eyes on everybody. So the uh, women's roller hockey doing a good job getting that tournament going and keeping it going. All right, let's move on to the next one. Um, we're going to get into, so first skate talk, we're just going to talk some about skates real quick, but we're going to oh, yeah. bring up. Yeah. So, First one, the Nike skates. So those are going to be the Nike J ones, um, which is by Just Do Hockey, which is basically the or Just Do It Hockey. Do it. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So CJ Gamble, he's the man behind it. We're gonna get him on the pod. Um, but we're gonna what we did is release the pod, post some pictures of a prototype skate. Um, and I know he's trying to work with Nike, and we'll let him get into that more of talking about that and everything. Uh, but it's a prototype skate trying to get, you know, Nike back involved in hockey, inline hockey, whatever in general. Um, so we worked with him for honestly probably like two months going back and forth on some yeah. just different things, pictures and you know, how, how we should do this and stuff. So I uh, got a quote from him, did a little interview to just throw on the blog um but obviously you just see the skates you haven't felt the skates you haven't used the skates you don't know how the performance is but looking at the skates i'm gonna say right now looking at the skates looking at everything that's a 10 out of 10 um uh, yeah, they're flawless uh, obviously the yeah, nike design sick. is so sick but yeah. uh, unreal even like i love how so getting into like the specifics it looks like and again these are prototypes it looks like it has a little bit of like a carbon boot to it too yeah. So, I, like, originally, when you looked at the first, like, renditions of them, you're like, oh, leather, it's going to be super, like, old school hockey skates for leather. So, this has, like, a little carbon feel to it. The chassis, I, what I, I feel like that is, leather gives it the, that Nike feel. It does, though, right? 100%. Yeah, I assume it's just wrapping the carbon yeah. boot. So, because the part of it's exposed of carbon. So, I assume the leather's just kind of like a layer over it. But the thing that I love most about them, honestly, I think the chassis are sick because they're red. And I think you don't really see a lot of color chassis. It's usually everyone has, you know, the high low chassis that are just the mission one. So the Zoom the Elite on there, so fucking sick. Yeah, dude, you have a little yeah. Nike on there, like discreet. They look like they're the Kryptonium uh, chassis yep. as well, too. Yeah. I, you know, I I don't know. Um, and then you have the Nike wheels. I mean, those things just like look like butter. So yeah, I they do. I just think from like head to toe, they're very very clean, very. Yep very well done um obviously you don't know the performance yet but just looking at those things There's i bet it. you it, you put those on the market people are gonna buy them just to have like drake's gonna have those in his fucking in his yeah, living room 100%. just posted you know like these yeah. things are so, they're so nasty and and like they put out like mock gloves and everything and they look exactly like not the fedorov gloves 
the one that everyone knows, yeah. like the the ovaled ones, but they put out like the four roll version of the Nike glove and like the white leather like looks sick. There was a, you know, they have a black and white one, so or a red and white one, excuse me. So looks they look pretty sick, and I love how like even throughout their page they have a couple of pictures of like some of the old school Nike shoes and like what the skate is mimicked after. So I think that was pretty cool. So like the original ones where they had like the Federov ninety sevens, they're like they're sick too. the all white boot, which is, you know, kind of a thing now with like mission, having the all white boot, a couple of companies doing a tour made an all white boot. So um, yeah, they're nasty. Even the ice hockey skates, like the whole nine, it just looks sick. So I think it's probably like even guys at my local rink are asking like, yo, what's going on with the, you know, the yeah. Nike stuff that just do it stuff. So it's obviously created some, you know, some hype in the industry, which is awesome. It's huge. No, I'm uh, I can't wait to get my hands on a pair of those skates. <laughs> That's all yeah, I got to yeah, say for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're nasty. If you guys haven't checked them out, check it out. Just do hockey on Instagram. Uh, if you want to go onto our website, rollerdadnews.org, and check out that blog, you can too. Um, just yeah, they're sick. Check just it out. It. Check out the work. Yeah, <laughs> just do, just, just do, do it. it. All right, now moving on to the next skate, which I want to get your opinion on. Uh, yeah. I love Bauer. I know we've like we've done some Bauer sent us stuff and done some things with Bauer and stuff, and I personally love Bauer. I just bought brand new actually power skates the week before the those skates came out which kind of a little bummed out if you're hearing this power um the new skates drop the vapor hyperlite twos yeah the ice you know the, the hyperlite ice um two skates right um yeah. with you know just different chat the chassis yeah, yeah, yeah chassis and everything song, on it. yeah, yeah. I like the skates. I, you know, top end skate, you know, they are not as priced high as the, uh, the mission war with the, the, the war hammer, they were called war, war machine, <laughs> war machine, war hammer, <laughs> the war machine. Uh, but it seems like everyone's are pissed off. Everyone is pissed off about this chassis. And yeah. I just want to know, Hey, I, I think the Kryptonium chassis is awesome. I'm also not a fucking scientist and I don't understand why everyone like thinks that they're a scientist and was like, Oh, this is so much better. So, Anth, I'm asking you, why is yeah. the Kryptonian chassis better than the one that's on there? And how can you tell me that it's like, other than the way it looks, why is yeah. it? So, all right, here's what I'll say. I have a Kryptonian Are you a chassis. scientist too? No, I'm not. But I'll just go off of playing, like playing, you know, experience. I have, a Kryptonian, yeah, I have a Kryptonian chassis on my missions, my war machines, you know, the, M, the M1s. And... The yeah, Warhammers, Warhammer, Warhammer chassis. Um, and that chassis just broke off of a shot, like, and whatever. It is what it is. I had the skates a couple of years. It's bound to That's going to happen. That's going to happen. I've had the step down, just like the normal uh, magnesium ones. And I've had them where they don't break. And I've had them where they do break. The biggest thing is going to be the weight. I think people would be pissed off about the weight because the Kryptonium chassis is significantly lighter than just your, like your normal, normal magnesium one. So I think that's why people are pissed off because it's a top end skate with a, I guess a little heavier of a chassis, but as far as like durability and all that stuff goes, like I've had to go either way. And yeah. I, how much, how much is a couple ounces really going to mean, you know, once it's on your foot anyway, you know what are I mean? Are you like, really going to notice? Is it really going to make you that much better of a skater? If you're I already not that, if you're, you're already not good. It's not, the skate's not going to make you better. Right. So I, so I really don't know. Like that was the backlash I saw was mostly just on, was just on the chassis. Then you're always going to have idiots on there. Like, Oh, these are roller hockey skates. They're not ice hockey skates. But like at the end of the day, they're basically the same build minus a few features. Like I know the tongue on this one's different. They have like a felt tongue, but I have the felt tongue on the missions and I love them. They're super thick and they took a little bit to break in, but I like the felt tongue personally for me, because it's got a little more protection than like the thin tongues that you see on the other hyper lights. So I don't know. It's I think people are just hating the hate because that's uh, how it is. But uh um, bored, man. But I was I, like, I, I still think they look clean as shit, regardless. Yes. Yeah. One thing that I kind of annoying too, like not annoying, it's just like funny, is bow missions not putting out skates yearly. People know this. This has been a thing. Okay. It's like in you know, roller hockey is a niche sport as is, where we're they're not, you know, some companies just stop doing inline hockey stuff. So the more people chirp the new product that comes out, the less they're going to be enticed Great point. to release Great it. point. So, like, if you want Bauer Mission to keep coming around, love it. Show more appreciation to it. 
don't a great point. Fuck this skate, this, this, that, this. No, doesn't have my chassis, dude. You're not buying the fucking skate anyways. It doesn't fucking matter. So Bro. take your fucking opinion and fucking go back home and stick handle yeah. in the garage because and no one fucking cares. And again, it's, I, I just it's just a reason to complain. That's just it is, and like, I get it. Like it. if it was a terrible chassis where it's like, yo, the skate's unbuyable, you're gonna buy the skate or you're not. It, it like right. so. And guess what? You're going to buy the skate and put another chassis on it, so you're going to be supporting Mission no matter what. So why don't you talk better? Why I, I just don't get it. I just don't well, see why there's so much room for hate instead of, like, love because Bauer and Mission's not releasing product anyways for inline all the time. So, hey, let's maybe show a little, like, you know, love, and maybe these people are going to be like, oh, okay, actually, we do have a market for inline hockey. And like, no, it's funny. Like, I'm just sorry. I just had to rant no, on no, that because you're, you're I just right. think it's funny. Like, we have one of the last of the dying breed, Mission Hockey, that the one of the best, you know, companies to ever exist in roller hockey. And you're going to chirp the fatherhood, the father of that company, the product they're putting out. Yeah. Like, it just <laughs> doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like, good luck. Yeah. And then, and then people are saying, like, on the comments, like, bring back Mission. Like, Mission's still around. Like, what, like, what yeah. are people talking about? Like, they're coming out with skates next year. Like, this is like they were at State Wars last year with like drawings and mock ups for people to like, hey, what style do you like? Like, getting actual feedback from roller hockey players and kids and the whole nine. And like, people are just haters are going to hate. Like, you give yeah. someone a reason to hate something, they're going to do it. What I thought was like pretty cool that they did on the release is you see uh, Maddie Beneers and they had Trevor Zegers, like, you know, just doing a little video sick. shoot. Like, it's yeah. cool to see them on, like, wheels and stuff like that. And, you know, who knows? Maybe they, they get interested in, in the future. You see, like, you know, Pat Maroon, you know, did it during his off season once. Maybe they, you know, they know someone who's involved in the sport and they get interested. And that's what we talk about all the time. That's what the sport needs. More, like, N NHL influence and, you know, pros uh, advocating for the sport, right? So, um, and then you're always just going to get people in this comment section just saying crazy. Anytime we put up a post like this, whether it's the Nike one, which yeah. had a lot of positive feedback, and then you have this one that had some negative in there. Like, you got guys talking about like, oh, what kind of bearings are in there? What kind of this, that, and the third? It's like, dude, what are you talking about, man? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, come on, fuck up, dude. like, figure it the hell out. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? So, um, but yeah, again, like they got Lebeda wheels on there. They had the Millenniums, which are a classic wheel. Um, they look fine. The skate looks great. I mean, personally, I think like the new Vapors and the new Hyperlite like models have all looked great the past couple of years. So, yeah, that's, that's no. kind of my my two cents on it. Yeah, the, stop hating. No, nah, yep, yeah, can't can't agree anymore. Um, all right. So leading on into the interview, which is perfect segment for the Wish Cup All Star Game. Uh, you know, like we said. We got the man behind MB Media, Colby Collier. Hope I didn't mess up the last name too bad. Uh, I think he did pretty good. Yeah. He... So we got Colby coming on in the pod. Uh, man behind the Wish Cup. Um, you've probably seen his stuff, MD Media, pretty much anywhere. Uh, honestly, I first saw his stuff with uh, Chavo. I think he went out to Barcelona, I want to say, with Chavo for the Team US yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. And did some work out there with True Hockey, I want to say. I could be wrong. But yeah, he's... He's Definitely. content creator, um, you know, tournament organizer, um, but, you know, really just trying to grow the game of roller hockey. And with this Wish Cup, um, I, the All-Star Game is one of the coolest events um, of the summer. I will say that, you know, just by who's there, the influencers, the stuff they're doing from them now um, it is really cool. We talked to Colby probably about a couple months ago, um, you know, wanting to get involved with it and what we can do. And he was just telling us the behind the scenes stuff, just like, what these guys get and you even see it still like i know like pj still uses yeah. like his true gloves he got last year oh yeah our game but you know these players uh they're getting decked out and just you know this gear and i know we posted that picture of the in the wish cup helmet sticker wrap which was yeah, unbelievable. Decal, sick. Yeah, yeah so yeah i, I i'm excited uh I, I think we're gonna be there um i think yeah. that's you know that's pretty much easy to say but lock it Lock, lock it, it in, down, baby. lock it down. Just like, just like Duke over whoever you said earlier. Duke over Vermont, Vermont. fucking put lock it in it, money dude. line. Fucking month. lock it. Uh, seven, seven, ten Eastern time. I'll be drunk at five ten. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Anyways, can add some of the pictures. Um, what I was gonna say is like, I like how even in that All Star event, they involve kids in it too, and it's and it's just like one of those like feel good events right in general like the whole tournament's a feel-good tournament but the all-star game specifically 
a really good feel good thing. And then, um, you know, like you said, with the influencers, it's just helping grow the game. And I think it probably does one of the best jobs at doing that. Like names, like team names and the collars of the jerseys, it's just a small shit that like, when you go to a tournament, you're like, man, they're really taking care of us. And he does a really good job. Even when we talked to him last year about it, just like some of the different things he was doing and what's involved in it. Like it was actually pretty impressive that how big this thing's grown. It's like tripled in size since like the original year. And he told us, um, on when we were texting them about the ice hockey side of things too. So they're doing an ice event as well, which is cool. So um, now it's really kind of taking, taking Nashville hockey by storm, honestly. Yeah. And it's, you know, for a good cause for, uh, you know, make a wish foundation, which is really cool. Um, and, you know, we'll get into that with Colby kind of explain like really the, the whole purpose behind it, which is a really cool story, but the one really cool takeaway that I see what this event really does, you know, not just for, you know, um, you know, does tremendous stuff for the foundation for the for you know make a wish foundation which is really cool and that's what overall what it's about um but it also introduces um you know players to inline hockey um you know in a way where you know these influencers or people that you know it it really mixes the best of the best of inline hockey and you know the best influ influencers into one which help grows the game and it gets more attention on it which help gets more attention on the wish cup which you know it helps it helps everybody yeah. yeah so I just think, I think that's one of the really cool things, you know, there's a lot of these guys that, you know, the influencers that do come to this event that might not know like the top players that play inline hockey. Now they get to, they see them and they're like, Oh, like <laughs> this fucking, uh, you know, inline hockey is actually pretty fucking sick. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. So, you had like Kevin Engate play last year. Like, well, yeah, you have like Nasher yeah. on, you know, on the bench boys, yeah, like the, the guys, guys. That have been there consistently, but it's like, yo, they are coming to the event. Like that should get the attention of, you know, just, you know, other eyes too. So it is cool. Yep. Yeah. There's, I mean, it's, it's like you said, it's grown so big um, and just bringing more people in. And then you're seeing guys like, you know, I followed the one goalie, uh, Mr. Heffy. Right. And all this stuff was ice hockey stuff. Now you're starting to see him put out roller content, which is cool. Cause like you said, now it's just additional eyes on the sport and like, Oh, this guy plays roller too. What's this roller all about? They tune into this event and they're like, Oh my God, there's like, Adam Ernie, who played last year, right? Like you're seeing NHL guys playing this event, which is cool. Yeah, so it's no. grown from the influencers to the best players in the world, so it's cool. Yeah, no, they and you know there's the pro division is pretty, you know, pretty good. It's pretty cool, fun pro division too, you know, because you're in Nashville, you're having a good time, um, you know. So I think the, the, the guilty guys, playing a little bit. Yeah, but it's like a, you know, it's you get to have fun too, you know, when you're there. It's a fun um, arena. That rink is sick. Both the uh, two rinks. Still matte floor, got that overhang too, which is really nice. Nice breeze going through. So yeah, it's it's just an overall sick setup. Yeah, and I think it's in June, so perfect time of year to do it too, where it's not too hot. And go to Nashville. And go to Nashville, nice weather. So it's a perfect time of year to do it. I think um, you know, just like even what we saw last year, we're like had a lo- lot of FOMO. So it's good that we're gonna be uh attending this year and get to go down the to nasty. Nasty, so. nasty cup yeah all righty well uh i think it's perfect time to send it over to the interview yeah let's send it over sending the first shift all right everyone welcome back to another edition interview edition of the rdn roller show where we're bringing you the latest stories from the, around the roller hockey world today we have an exciting interview with none other than the man behind the camera for md media md media has been creating content for the roller ho- for roller hockey over the past several years grabbing audiences worldwide not only has this man been showcasing roller artistically through the camera but he's also doing it through his nonprofit tournament called the wish cup we have a ton to cover in this interview a ton i mean so without further ado welcome to the podcast mr colby collier welcome dude thanks boys uh it's a blast i love listening in on the show i'm i'm pumped to like just be a part of it I, th- I think for we can all, you know, agree with this. This is a long time coming for us uh, getting you on here. So um, and, and I think really the first question, let's just kind of take it back. Like, how time out. You- we got to see where Colby's in. What uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is this like the workshop? Is this the MD media workshop or what do you uh, boys? Have? It's an absolute mess right now. Like <laughs> all the camera gears back here. This is okay. my desk that I work at. And then let's just pull this off. All of this is like stuff that's prepped. I'm going to turn this the right way. Stuff there we go. Prepped for the wish cup. And then like all camera gear here and then mm-hmm. lights and then more lights. 
It's just it's gotta be. my office is an absolute wreck right now. Yeah, that's like Na- that's uh, Nashville's Hollywood right there. So that's yeah. like media <laughs> studios. Yeah. You got that like comes- fat heads back there. You got better lighting than we do. Oh yeah. You're Mandy good. had this one, like Ash finished his last year in mites, and then like she takes this to tournaments and holds it up. Gen- Let's go. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. You gotta love that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thanks for getting a little tour of the, the studio. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So so what we were saying, like what, how did you get started in hockey in general? Like, is it did it start with ice? Did it transfer to roller or was roller kind of the first like um like introduction you had to hockey? Man, so um Moved to Nashville, didn't know much about hockey before then. Went, our very first game was a Preds and Wings playoff game, which like years ago, like that was the rivalry. And it was so much fun. I was hooked right then. Like I went to um, I went to play it against sports, bought all used ice gear, and then like joined a team. And I, I was terrible. I'm still terrible, but I was even more terrible back then. Um, introduction to Roller. So I got connected with with Shavo when he was playing in Huntsville to do a little bit of video work. And then um, it, it just came up that like there was a, a shoot that we needed to go do in Philly. Um, it was doing uh, like around the, the Rocky steps doing a shoot there. And that was literally the first time that I'd put on rollerblades. And like, I had to follow this guy who's like one of the best roller players or <laughs> roller skaters like ever and like imagine a guy that has never put on roller skates holding like this gimbal right back here with a full camera set up on it probably weighs 30 40 pounds trying to follow him through the city it was guys when i tell you it was a disaster it was a disaster but the footage came out great like i'm surprised i didn't it it was bad because like we would go down these sidewalks and i'm like john you got to carry this like he'd carry the camera to the next location and i would like barely make it to the next location and then like we'd shoot whatever and then we'd go to the next place so, so like, it was a mess but it was so much fun just so everyone knows too right where they're talking about near the rocky steps it is a zoo like it's a big <laughs> kind of, it's a big roundabout right and yeah. people fly through there because there's two major like roadway entrances so people just don't give a shit and they fly around that and he's talking about these side streets these side streets generally are pretty crappy paved like oh yeah Billy's infamous for his pothole issue. So, <laughs> so the fact it's funny you say that because we did a little video during COVID with my buddy and he's played hockey his whole life, but even him, he struggled skating like up and down those roads. He's like, dude, no, I'm just going to like meet you at the next location. <laughs> he would just meet us at the next location. So I yeah. can't imagine like first time you're on like roller jets and like, you're just trying to buzz around the city. Roller so, jets. There we go. Yeah, it like was that? brutal. Just brutal. Yeah. Well, Hey man made it out of life so, it's yeah. <laughs> so talking about Shavo, you you went to the world championships in 2019 in barcelona correct yeah so and much fun so can you like kind of like you know tell us you know a little bit about that for your experience being a content creator too um getting to see like you know the top the best inline hockey in the world yeah so like one first time i'd ever been there um traveling there absolute mess like this this thing back here like the the case that it goes in is is humongous like i showed you guys the cases over there gets lost on the way there doesn't show up i spend a couple hours in the airport and it finally shows up nobody speaks good english and like i can't understand anybody else so like i'm struggling there um but the actual tournament so awesome like we would literally um i'd put my skates on like sitting in my bed i was a much better skater by that point uh, put my skates on in my bed, like assemble the gimbal, roll out the elevator, down the boardwalk, skate up the beach directly to the rink and like skate inside the rink and then like just shoot the games. Like it was like it was paradise for like what I do and like how I work. It was so much fun, like getting to know John more, getting to know like like kiddies, know like all those guys that are just like the face of roller and see them just battle through that and then take that championship. Just like one of the best trips of my life. So much fun. Yeah. I was going to say, you probably like, you get to learn a lot about these guys too. Like see a different yeah. side of them. Like a lot of people watch the games and you just kind of see that. But when you're there along like a journey with them and you did an unbelievable job and we're going to have to link it of all the videos you did for that, uh, that team USA. Uh, it was like a movie. It was, it was pretty sick watching, yeah. but 
yeah, I'm yeah. sure like you got to see a different side of them as well. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And the bad thing is like, that was like how many years ago I look back on those videos. I'm like, man, I should have done this or this would have been cool. Like I'm always critiquing myself on it. Um, but it's such a good experience to like kind of set the bar and like help grow that here in the States. Yeah. I think we all have those moments where we're like, damn, we wish we could have did a little more. Yeah. Like <laughs> I remember, I remember that specifically, like, you know, during the downtime, which there's a lot of downtime in the tournaments because one USA usually plays later because they're like yep. the premier team to see. So you have the whole day to do stuff, but you and Chavo were like literally working the entire time, like putting yeah, stuff. We didn't, like, we didn't sleep. Yeah. It was like, like crazy they came like you just said they came out of the late games and it was like like they'd come out of the late game we'd go get dinner and this is at like midnight and then we get back to the hotel dump cameras and i would literally stay awake till like four or five in the morning editing to get that out and then like we're in a new place like i'm not gonna go to bed so like i gotta go see the city and then like we would go (laughs) we we literally like just put skates on and like went skated through the city like i followed in with a gimbal and like a like a trash stick and a green biscuit. Like it was just, it was paradise. It was That's so sick. much fun. That's so sick. What a, what a city to like first get to experience that into, because not yeah. only was it a cool, like set up with the rink next to the beach, but Barcelona was just like from whatever. Yeah. Stuff, it's an unbelievable place. So, and now you've done how many tournaments after that, right? You've done Narts. We worked together towards a couple of years ago, right? So you've yep. been pretty much there and back ever since. So it was like, kind of like, your coming out party, I would say really for, for everyone, like really diving into what you and the MD media group do. So, yeah, um, absolutely. So, you know, obviously we brought you on here today. You got the sick helmet right behind you there. Great product placement for, for yourself. Yeah. There. Um, we're here to talk about wish cup. Um, yeah. it's getting so much like momentum, popularity, everything. Um, can you just like kind of go back and, and kind of talk about how this idea came about, how it originated and really just overall what the whole tournament's about? Yeah. So for those that don't like know me and my family personally, uh, my son Asher is a wish kid. So like, I think it was the 18, 19 season, uh, make a wish, middle Tennessee, the Nashville predators and the Nashville predators foundation all got together and granted his wish. And like, if you know the kid, if you follow me on social, like he's, uh, all day hockey that's like that's all he wants to do like his wish smile on a Nashville. face all time too yeah yeah it's it's like it's crazy um his wish was to be a Nashville predator so they signed him to a contract he got to practice the team like keep in mind kids four years old at this point um like he's out there like passing fill one-timers like it's like the whole thing was nuts uh, they gave us a suite for a Leafs game. He got to be in the team photo. So like just an awesome experience for, for him, for our family. And like, just like, like you can't, not something that money could ever buy him. So like we were looking for something to keep him involved in the game and for us to be able to give back to that chapter, like financially. So they got to go grant other kids wishes. So like, all right, well, let's put on a hockey tournament series. So we started planning it. Uh, the first year, so we do two events a year. Generally, we do one ice, one roller event. I think the first year we had like four teams in an ice event and then nine teams in the roller event. And it is literally like, it's becoming a full-time job now. Like we, like we donate the proceeds. Like we don't take anything from it. Um, and it's, it's, it's pretty much doubling in size in terms of teams every year. It's like, it's a blast for our family. Um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of a lot of hard work, especially when the event comes around. But it's so much fun. Like, and we get to play hockey. Like, you can't really beat that. So, where was like, where was the first location for the Wish Cup for roller? So, for the first roller, uh, was at an outdoor rink on the opposite side of Nashville. Um, like concrete, like painted concrete, no cover. It was held over one day. Uh, We had like a rookie division and an open division. And man, like middle of July, Nashville, it was hot. Uh, And it was so much fun. Like we got it done in one day. Um, Second year, we were at uh, Bethel's facility. Um, It's like a one sheet indoor. Third year, fourth year, we were up at the new rinks in Hendersonville. Um, and then this year is our fifth year anniversary and we're doing it uh, at the same place up at the the new inline rinks in Hendersonville. I say new, like they look brand new, but they're, they're a couple years old, but it's still like an unreal facility. 
Yeah, I think I remember the I was there for like the opening and everything with uh, I think yeah. it was State Wars and um it's it is really unbelievable. And that was at the time where I'm sure now it looks a lot different. It didn't even have grass or anything, but it was yeah. like it still is so Yeah, they they polished it a little bit now. Yeah, and it was just even then it was just you could tell that like this facility was going to be top notch and it's unreal, you know. Two big rinks, still mat flooring. Uh you can't beat that, but when you first, you know, were coming out with the wish cup five years, five years later, did you ever anticipate it to grow this big? Like how no, it is with the yeah, all-star all. event? Like this all-star event is like you were saying, like it's the talk of the summer. I see people, you know, asking, how do I get in that all-star game? So did you oh, ever man. anticipate that? <laughs> no, like we were trying to think of something um, to like, to help grow it. Um, and like think outside the box. So like state wars is an, awesome tournament narch tours like these like we're not trying to compete with any of these guys because we can't like they're the the ogs of these tournaments but like we just want to put on a fun event that people look forward to coming to and like we want to donate a bunch of money and like help grant kids wishes so we're like how can we grow this like with a with a punch in one year so we're like let's put on an all-star game like let's see how it goes. And I think the first year, like we had John, we had Barber, uh, we had one of the on the bench guys. Um, and we had a lot of like pro ice players, um, some big female players that are big in the Nashville community. And like, it was a hit the first year. And then like, as soon as that happened, we started planning for, for year two, year two of the all-star game, I guess. And like, man, it was like everybody asking, like, how do we get a spot in this? How do we do this? Like, it's it's crazy, like what it's turning into. That's sick. And like kind of sticking with that. So one thing that I've noticed just from, you know, how you cover the tournament in general, right, is these influencers really interacting with kids, families, yeah. and all that stuff. Um, so, I mean, it's got to be super cool for them to give back to the to the people who support their, you know, support their pages, their social media accounts. So, um, you know, with that being said, like, you know, is there anything like one per particular guy that like stands out that does a really good job at just like making sure that they interact with the fans, making sure that they're, you know, really just showcasing the sport the best they can. Dude, there's kids hanging on the cage for Nasher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's, there's not, yeah. there's not. And I'll tell you why we want to work with people that are the best in the community and the best at what they do. So if we bring somebody on board for our all-star game and, you know, like they don't want to hang around and give autographs or like they're turning kids away, like that's not a good fit for us. Like you've got guys like, like Nasher, Shavo, Pete, uh, like Swaggy P, uh, the on the bench guys. Um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you a moment that sticks out to me. We, we had um, the six U double A championship. Um, it was either last year or the year before. It kind of all runs together to me. And it was right before the All-Star game. And we put it there um, in hopes that we would have a huge crowd for those kids because they're they're the future of the sport. And the on-the-bench guys, Barber and John, all warmed up. Like, they took warm-ups with the 6 U team. And, like, to see the look on their faces when that was happening, like – like I was coaching Asher in that game and I was like, like these kids are not focused on this game at all now, but like they're <laughs> having the time of their life. Like this is like, this is exactly what we're trying to build. So no, like everybody that takes part in that all-star game is giving back their time uh, to these kids and to help us grow something. So like I can't I can't name one of them because they're all they're all amazing guys. Otherwise, like that we wouldn't have them there. That's just that's just kind of like the way that we operate things. Yeah, I was gonna say you you see I was just watching uh the All Star Game clip and you see like all of them when Asher is out there he's out there dangling yeah. and stuff and you know it's it is different you know when you you know you have you know women's kids you know all different types of people out there playing and like yeah. you said they all respect each other and that it is really cool to see too especially like you know getting a one timer from a pro like how cool is yeah. that yeah it's nuts like it's it's so much fun to watch and and just to be a part of and know that it's growing the overall mission that we're trying to, to trying to put out 
So do you so, think like with this, you know, with this rink in particular, like, is it, um, how, how much does it play a part in the wish cup? Like now it's kind of like in your backyard where now you can like really hold things where you don't even have to like, you don't ever have to leave Tennessee. I don't know if that was ever, you know, a plan, but how big is having this like new rink, you know, for the wish cup? It's huge. Like we work kind of hand in hand with the parks department up there. It's a city owned rink. So like they're there cleaning up trash every night. Um, and we even had, I think while we were running the all-star game last year, some kids were messing around on the other sheet and there's a pane of glass that got broken and they were, they were on it like that. And they have been so good to work with. We actually had to go. It's funny because like the, the number of days, the length of the tournament is growing. And from what we originally had last year to this year, it's almost doubled in size so we had to go back in front of the parks board to get approved for it. And I was nervous thinking like, man, are they going to like, they're going to shut us down. Like, is this getting too big? And they were so pumped that we were there still working with them. So it's, it's awesome to see that like it's growing right here in Nashville. Now, is that like rank, just kind of side note here, is that rank getting used like, you know, aside obviously from tournaments and things like that, are they having leagues there and things like that, like permitting weather, weather? Yeah, so they have youth leagues, they have adult leagues there, and then the facility is just open. Like, you can go there and skate anytime you want, and then they leave the lots on at night until, like, 10, 10.30 p.m., and then they cut them off. It's like the best outdoor hockey rink experience. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. Yeah. You know, like, we and Robert go to, like, local parks, like, with bad concrete and, like, you know. Yeah, try, like, yeah the, like, honestly, our, our, our youth teams are, like, they're spoiled by it because we had our first practice up there. And like one of the guys that run the rinks, like he heard about it at, at Pure Hockey, like one of the kids walked in there and like drops what he's doing, goes to the rink and Zams, they have this like actual Zam for the rink that cleans the floor and clean the floor before our practice. Like that's, that's awesome. the type of relationship that we have with them. And it's awesome. Yeah. the It's, you know, I don't know if maybe it's just a Southern hospitality kind of thing, but um the first one right opened. Uh, I think there's a lot of like precipitation on the rink, moisture and everything. Yeah. I think there was people from like 45 minutes away coming just to help yeah. blow dry it off. It was like, you guys just have an unbelievable, uh, you know, set of people there. Um, with talking about the wish cup, the all-star game, I do have a question. What's the, uh, and a lot of people will, you know, have asked like, what goes through the process of selecting like the all-star, you know, you know, people with the all-star game, I'm sure you get like DMS, like, crazy where it's like now it is it's like hard to handle um but obviously like is there a, a selection process you maybe have to like do in the future now or um it is and it's it's gotten so big so we're doing it a little bit differently this year like we've had the last two years like we've we've had that all-star game but honestly like it was so packed last year that we couldn't get the guys that we really wanted to showcase as much ice time as we wanted them to have so this year we're doing we're doing a legends game. So it's going to have a lot of influencers, a lot of pro players, a lot of guys that are just integral in the Nashville hockey community taking part in that. In the middle of that, we're going to have an all-star skills competition and like when you guys see the events for this, like it's going to be an absolute show. I can't like I cannot wait for people to see it. So you can't, you, any, uh, I'll, I'll tell you details? this. So like you've got guys like, like Swaggy P like Barber, like Shavo who are those stick trick specialists. Right. So we're going to have them in a shootout competition and we're going to have celebrity judges think like, um, like all-star NBA dunk contest where like Shavo goes down like sick goal, whatever happens, they're holding up the numbers to give him a score and we get those scores and then continue going with it. That's, that's sick. So that that's one of three events that we're gonna have for it. Okay. God bless, um, God, God bless the goalies in that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's going yeah. To be yeah. There... It's gonna be a blast. Yeah. Go, Go ahead, Ant. No, I'm saying it's definitely not gonna be easy for those goalies. But I mean, it's it, I love what you're saying right now, just because you saw like something last year that you're like, man, I really want these guys to have more floor time. How can we give them more floor time, but not take away from the all-star game itself? Because that, you know, is different than a skills competition. They give them the bread and right. butter, what they're great at. Yeah, and they love and to now do. you're, yeah, you just exactly. add it right to it. It's cool. So you're, 
it's cool because not only this whole thing, what's awesome about it's talking about just kind of the growth and the path that's that it's gotten to where it is now. And you're still innovating, right? New ideas coming up with things that are just making yeah. it an overall better experience. And really what it's for is for the kids at the end of the day, right? Exactly. Or that want to see Pavel Barbara going out there doing a, a dangle or see Chavo or, or Swaggy P doing that is, you know, I think see that firsthand is so much cooler than even just watching it, you know, over video. Yeah. the entire time so um how excited is like asher for that kind of stuff like he you know rob said it earlier like he's always got a smile on his face and he just seems like to just love playing hockey 24 7 like you said so like how excited does he get like when he gets to meet some of these influencers you know it's funny and i don't know if it's i, I haven't pinpointed it yet but like he sees philip forsberg all the time he sees shavo all the time he sees these guys all the time and it's just like Hey, what's up? You want to go play? Like, it's not like there's no, there's no like sticker shock. There's no, like, he's not blown away. He's just like, we're going to the rink. Let's go. Like, it's, it's just like, they've yeah. been friends forever and he just wants to go play. Made it. Yeah. He's made it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah it's that's what you, yeah. Hey, yeah. It's, it's yeah now he's on the, he's on the RDN roller chair. Like, where it's are funny, he? man. It's like, yeah, it's exactly <laughs> what it is. We're gonna have to get a uh, Asher interview when we, uh, you know, for the Wish Cup. I think that'd be uh, that'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah, is uh, you know, got another question about you know Asher too. Um, when he's like, you know, like he was Ant was saying, he's around all these guys. And you want to get it's exciting. Is he? Does he? I mean, does he get excited all year round knowing that this event's coming up? Like, is he like he does, about- and he plays does- he plays hockey like all year round. He's on a he just finished his last year in Mites, so like he's. Like in spring camp now, they have nine U double A tryouts soon. So he's going into that. And then in the mix, he's got roller. We're actually headed to Denver Thursday for um oh, what's it called? Like Colorado Cup. I'll I'll have to find what it is in Cincinnati, yeah. but we're going out there for his last ice tournament of the year. That's awesome. Um, but he's like he plays all year round and he's just like, Yeah, let's go. We're just, just another day. That's that's great. Um, so with the with the wish cup all-star game or is there anyone like new in particular that you can maybe like tell us if there is anyone new coming to the you know the all-star game? yeah so uh, let's let's go goalies Um, i'll tell you the four goalies that we have um teed stefano cantilli yeah nick the goalie social sensation yep yep. and uh i don't know if you guys know him bonesy fred's e-bug oh yeah yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Four, those four are in the All Star game, and then we've got a couple other surprises for the Legends game as well. Nice. Yeah. The um the Bonesy guy. I just started watching him on YouTube because he has another yeah. guy that he does the channel with, right? Sometimes like the other Predzy bug, and like, they do yeah. a lot, they do a lot of cool stuff on there, like day in the life of an e bug, like you know, kind of yep. walking through like when they have game yeah. days and stuff. Seems like a pretty, I mean, it seems like Nashville. I know they say, you know, not to get up too all top of it, they say Nashville has like a really good e buck situation where they like they do, they've they're they're set. <laughs> yeah, they get a sick situation going on there, and that rink is just awesome in general. So, yeah, um, yeah, ahead. I think, um, you know, the Wish Cup sounds like I think this year it's you know, it's gonna blow uh, what is it, the uh socks off your feet or something off the water whatever that yeah i i think this year for you know the wish cup is is going to be super exciting to see that all-star game that legend and then have the you know kind of like the slam dunk contest style you know um skills competition i think that is going to be super sick um can't wait i saw that you just released like a media team uh that's yep. going to be there for the wish cup um and a lot of those guys you know it looks like they're you know they shoot professionally just as you do too uh yeah. you know can you expand a little more on like what that, what they'll be doing, um, you know, around the all-star game or just the wish cup in general. Yeah. So I, it is a fault of mine. Like I've taken on too much in the past. Like I can't shoot everything. I can't, I can't do everything. So I'm trying to delegate more like when it comes to these tournaments, but like we want to have the content to, to one, grow the wish cup two to grow roller and like, bringing in these guys to to help do that has been on my bucket list for probably a year now like we want to have the best content out there and i think we're bringing in the team that's going to do it 
Yeah, I was checking out their social channel. I, I love, I mean, I just love content creation and just like yeah. watching like just videos in general and stuff like that. And I was just checking out their stuff. And, um, you know, it's there. It looks like it's going to be, you know, you won't have any problem with any highlights or anything. So you'll get to yeah. fully do what you <laughs> want to do and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to have them there. So like with the content creation stuff, kind of, kind of floating it back here, like yeah, obviously you've been doing this for a while. Your content's highly regarded. Like, is there anything specifically you find most enjoyable when shooting hockey content is it shooting you know the like on the bench type of stuff where like you're you're like when you're following black ice during tours right being in the mix with the boys on the bench shooting or is it something more along the lines of like what you just released like through the wish cup account with like going through the city with like Shabo and the kids and like doing stuff that's like off the rink that's kind of a little more like creative i i like i love it all um if 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 I'm having fun and whoever I'm with, whether it's like a black eyes tournament or I'm going to Toronto to shoot with Barber, like if I'm having fun and whoever I'm shooting is having fun, like it's going to reflect that in the videos and like, it's going to be great. So uh, if it's hockey and it's content, like I'm there, like I've worked with, like with true with Bauer, with Shabo, with Barber, the on the bench guys, like, you name it and, and like I'll be there to do it as long as we're having fun. Um, and it's, and it's growing the game. So like, it's just like, I just love doing it. Yeah. And it's, it's all, it's all still just a side job for fun for me. Yeah. And Is there like a, go you ahead. Work bag, you work your bag off too. Like I remember at tours, Yeah. <laughs> for some reason you left me with the camera. I was like, this thing looks way too expensive for me to be operating, but like, and then you would like run down and then you would like help me close the live stream. I'm like, dude, like you're buzzing, you're buzzing that entire time. So you definitely, uh, you could tell you enjoy it. Cause you, you know, with how hard you work actually just as a testament to like how much you care for the sport and wanted to see it grow. I mean, just yeah. look behind him <laughs> look at everything that yeah. he, he's doing. It's uh um, is there, you know, I, I see the stuff that you've done with Pavel Barber, you know, you've been to, you know, up in Canada, Barcelona. Um, is there a particular like shoot or, you know, a particular video that you remember the most, like that, you know, just stands out the most. Maybe it was, you know, you know, some troubles you were just like going through, you just couldn't get a shot and then it worked out. Is there a certain, sh you know, photo? I would say, I would say there's two things that like when I was really getting started kind of stood out to me. Like when I met John, and he was playing with the Havoc. Um, I went down there just kind of like on a whim, didn't know the guy. And like, it turned out great. And it was like the start of like, she's one of my best friends now. Like we're great friends now. And then the same thing with Barber, the very first time that I went to shoot with him, he had no idea who I was. And like, just gave me the time of day to like, I footed the bill, like just flew up there on a whim. He's like, yeah, I got a couple hours to shoot on whatever day. So like literally flew up there, um, footed the bill for everything, paid for the ice time, just got him on the rink. And then like it, that was the start to all of it. Like it just blew up and it was like something great to look back on um, just putting the time in and being able to get there. Yeah. And I think one thing like, you know, you were just kind of talking about is I don't think the people, you know, in social media in general, like realize how much uh, time, effort, work that you like put into, you know, away from your family, the money that you put into just like how much you like really invest your time and how passionate you are about it. You know, um, your content really shows like, it, you know, it really shows through that. And, you know, a lot of people don't, you know, realize, you know, like what a real, like a content creator, like yourself, what you're doing, you know, like what you go through. So I, you know, here at RDN, we, you know, huge kudos to you just because you are definitely, you know, stick taps just because, um, uh, you know, like you were saying, you know, footed the bill for a lot of those things and you're just there doing it passionately. You know, that's, yeah. that's all it is, is passion. Yeah. It's just for fun. Like the gear, the camera gear, like in any, in any sense of like content creation, camera gear is expensive. Uh, traveling is also expensive, but like I had a vision of what I want to put together and like, we're there. And like now everything on top of it is cake. Like we get to do like cool photo shoots with this stuff. And like, it's a blast. Like we get to showcase so many cool things to people that like may never have even seen hockey before. And it's, it's, it's a blast. And I like, I love doing it. 
And especially in like your area, Nashville is like a growing area for hockey just because yeah. the Preds have been good forever. And now they're having a sick little run as well. Like, yeah, and they're, staying yeah good. they're on a heater like, right now. They're on a heater. So there's nobody wants to see them in the playoffs. I'll tell you that. But like, <laughs> it's cool because you're, it seems like you're in a perfect location for that to happen. And to have you there, I think Nashville in general is lucky to have a content creator like yourself there who cares this much about the game that can help grow it. And you're seeing it like firsthand with the wish cup, right? It's what like triple quadruple in size to, from like the first initiation to now. So, um, you know, you're doing a great job there to kind of like Rob said, give you a little stick tap um, in that regard, but um, kind of looking ahead with the wish cup too, like, like what are the aspirations for the future of it? Is it to keep growing? Is it to like Rob mentioned earlier, maybe like new location or anything like that? Do you have any, like, if you had a magic wand, you could wave in front of it. Like I want to get there one day with the wish cup. I don't know. Uh, like, so, like my wife has asked me that a lot. She's like, what's your goal with this? And I'm like, I have no idea. Like <laughs> Smart new woman. things, literally new things come up every single week. Like we just signed BioSteel as a sponsor last week. Like just all these things keep happening. And as long as it's feasible, as long as it makes sense for, for me, the tournament and my family, like we'll do it. I would love to host a tournament in like another location like like a, i know we're on east coast but like further east or further west like as long as it makes sense and like the community or the support systems behind us that we can pull it off yeah we'll absolutely do it awesome yeah i mean it doesn't really beat nashville though. that's the tough part yeah it's not yeah the you money. got and then you have downtown so and like that's like the new vegas for people right i think it's better than vegas yeah. Opinion, but like it's the new vegas for people and like you have such a sweet facility there brand new you know still map floor we talked about it right so that's gonna be tough to beat but uh but it's cool that you you still won't always try to like almost one up yourself every year yeah. you know and and just keep making it better and better because that's what it's there for to give back to the people who are you know supporting us you whoever it may be yeah exactly like we just want to make this a more enjoyable experience so that like when we release our tournament dates or we open registration, like it's, it sells out. Like we don't have to do anything. People know the product that we're going to put out and they're excited to come and like, just be a part of it. Yeah. I, uh, so it's gonna be uh, one of our, one of our last questions. Um, one that I kind of, uh, you know, maybe you do have a certain player. Maybe you don't, we're going to take Shavo out. Cause that's not fair. Shavo is, your best friend. Sorry, you know, this is what the answer will be. And we're going to take the influencers out of this too. Is there right. a uh, particular player that you like, you have loved shooting or like would love to shoot more of um, just, just because you have, you know, fun watching them play or just, you know, is there a certain player that you've like, you know, like that's like my dream, you know, dream player to shoot, you know, watch them play or something like that. You know, have you guys seen that video? Um, of the photographer that was working with Tyreek Hill. Yes. And like I, they did that backflip yep. and then like he got booted yeah. and now he owns his own media company. Right. Yeah. It's like so F2 like, media, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I would love to work with like really any of the Preds. Like I, I have a soft spot for Forsberg just because of like his relationship with Asher. Like I would love to do like some stick trick video with him, but like, any of those guys, man, like the Preds have such a soft spot in my family's heart. Like it would just be so much fun to get to do. Yeah, and that he, would. I would say he had a scrap the other day. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, little, I, would, I looked at the I was like, like half yeah. watching the game. I was half watching the game and I look up and Phil's fighting. And I'm like, what's happening? Like, what, what, what's, what's going on? on? Yeah, I don't. The game winner. Monster. And he did good and he was doing yeah. well at the beginning, honestly. So. Yeah, I didn't expect him to scrap. And then Cider's a big boy, too. Cider's, he yeah. was chucking him, but, you know, he, Forsberg is, uh, he's he's not a fighter. I never thought of him, like, as a fighter like that. But, yeah. you know, you got to you gotta grind it out. It's like you said, scores the game winner. Got to do what you got to do, team guy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so <laughs> I think, I, yeah, that would be a, that would be a pretty cool, like, you know, a dream shoot, like, you know, yeah. player like that. But, um, you know, talking a little bit about content, too. What are your what's your views on that situation with like the Tyree Kill kind of thing that happened to that content creator? I don't know. I don't think I'm sure that there are there's more to the story on both sides that we know. Um, but the guy is like a magician with the camera. So like yeah. he gets fired from he gets fired from that job. 
so what? There's going to be 10 more people lining up ready to sign him. Um, and I think all it did was um, was make him – what's the word I'm looking for? Like make make more people want him. Mm-hmm. So like, like – like, yeah, it, it stinks that it happened, stinks that he got fired, but like who cares? Yeah. Like, there's people lining up to hire him. He, yeah. he probably did himself better. It's almost like – Exactly. No, yeah. no press is bad press, right? Like you know what I mean? So. Exactly. Yeah, I would say, listen, well, we've taken up a decent amount of your time here today. We do appreciate you coming on. I want to take something I, I like to show hot ones a lot. I like watching it. I'm going to take something from them a little bit, how they wrap up their show. So Wish Cup's coming up. So take the last couple you know, seconds here, a couple minutes here, whatever it may be, and just tell us as much information you want about the Wish Cup dates. You know, is there spots still available? Anything like that. The floor is completely yours to kind of wrap this thing up for us. Yeah, so Nashville, Tennessee – June 1 through 11, uh, the wishcup.com block schedule is on the website. We have at least a spot open in every division. Some are getting close to being closed because we cap the amount of teams. We don't want a situation where, like, you know, you're playing games at midnight. So we cap all of the divisions so that you get an enjoyable time, you have an enjoyable experience. And if you want to come to a tournament that, like, I'm just going to tell you, you're going to have a blast at it. Um, We're not trying to compete with your your State Wars narcs because we we don't want to. Like, those guys are the OGs of the field, and, like, I enjoy going and playing their tournaments. So um, come to Nashville. Have a great time. Uh, Come watch the All-Star game. The All-Star game will be June 1. We've got some really cool surprises, some celebrities that are going to be in the game, and – it's going to be a blast. I'm excited about it. I mean, you're getting us pumped just th- saying that that was perfect. I mean, there ain't, there's not a better <laughs> than that podcast than, <laughs> than what you just said there. Because you can see me and Rob, we're both cheesing hard right now. So, like I said, we both appreciate it. We could probably do three episodes with you just talking about content creation. There's yeah. so much other stuff I want to get into. But, um, but well, again, we'll schedule the next one during the tournament when you guys are here. Go. Perfect. Boom bomb drop so perfect yeah. people listen we appreciate you hopping on uh the the interview with us it's going to be an awesome event so everyone like you said make sure you check out the wish cup and then uh and follow throughout the whole weekend because you do a great job at uh kind of showcasing what's going on on the day-to-day basis awesome, awesome. thank you guys i'm pumped thank you colby we'll see you later guys